Hello everybody, this is Ananda from Fort Stockton, Texas. For this assignment two, we'll be talking about ang off and modified ang off methods. Let's get started. So uh, let's go back a little bit uh, to the history of this ang off method. The picture that you see on the right top corner, his name is William ang off. So this method is named for him, a research scientist which was employed by educational testing services in the 60s, he believed the best way to determine the minimum level of competence was to assemble a panel of experts in that particular field which will evaluate potential testing question. It is widely used standard setting approach in developing the test question. It is easy to understand, easy to apply. As I said before, it relies on subject matter expert SMEs. They examine the content of each test question and they estimate the proportion of minimally competent student that would correctly answer the item. So the average of the expert's prediction for a test question now becomes its predicted difficulty. The summation of those predicted difficulty values for each item average across the judges or the experts and items on a test, and that's a recommended angle of cut score. This panel recommended raw cut score represents the score which the panel estimates a minimally competent candidate would get. So these experts, they determine the probabilities, they can select any from 0 to 1. So with this Angoff method, it can have overconfidence bias. There could be limited resource and also you need a well qualified expert who may not be always available in many of the institution because of that, you know, not having enough time between any task other than student assessment. So throughout the years, the original Angoff method has been modified, whether the modification is for polyidomous items, rounding of ratings to a different numbers of decimal places, providing adjustment across the set of items instead of for each individual item, and the inclusion of multiple rounds with discussion and the feedback. The reason for that is such modification will help to improve the defensibility of the resulting cut scores. So this modification, as I said before, would provide additional information to the judges or the experts and also the improvement in the cut score. The recommended number of judges for the Angoff, it can range from 5 to 30. So in this, the judges or the experts, they're allowed to adjust their estimates after being provided with a true performance score of the candidates, a reality check. So this is the most common method used for licensure and certification in the profession's achievement test, the modified Angoff method. Subject matter experts, they are generally briefed on the Angoff method and are allowed to take the test with the performance levels in mind. So the SMEs, those experts, are then asked to provide estimates for each question of the proportion of the borderline or minimally acceptable participant that they would expect to get the question correct. So those estimates are generally in a p-value form. Zero, example would be 0 0.6 for item 1, meaning 60% of the borderline passing participants would get this question correct. So several rounds are generally conducted with the experts that allows to modify their estimates given the different types of information. And the final determination of the cut score is then made by either averaging all those estimates or taking the median. So the modified Angoff method restricts the probabilities to eight choices, ranging from 0.2 0.6 to 0.95, and some could put, do not know. It includes a second round of judgments after the judges or the expert have seen their peer judgments. So in the literature, when I looked at it up, the term Angoff and modified Angoff methods are used interchangeably. So let's take a good example for a certified PA. Before you become a PA, you need to take that PANS exam. And NCCPA is the authority for, for those test questions. 
So in the, for the NCCPA, they use the Engulf method as their standard setting approach, meaning they have a panel of experts, using the PAs, and you know the question level ratings are provided by those experts, and they're aggregated to find a recommended cut score, and then the final recommendation is taken from the decision by the panelists, and which is now submitted to the NCCPA board of directors to consider that and for the approval. So in conclusion, take home message from this one, Engulf and modified Engulf methods, they are used interchangeably. Whatever you say, those methods have been widely used in test creation. They rely on subject matter experts, SMEs, they examine the content of each test question or the items, and they estimate the proportion of minimally competent examinees that would correctly answer the item. The Modified Engulf method, which have been modified from the original for all these years, has been done in, so that way it improved the defensibility of the resulting cut scores as compared to the original Engulf method. So these are some of my references that I used uh, during this PowerPoint. So there's seven of those references there. And that would be all. You all have a good day. Bye-bye.